Thanks for joining us. In this performance audit, we looked at the expense policies and practices in the offices of the Speaker, Clerk, and Sergeant at Arms from April 1, 2016 to December 31, 2018, and whether the expenses of those three offices were governed by policy. Overall, we found that the expenses of the offices of the Speaker, Clerk, and Sergeant at Arms were not adequately governed by policies. We made nine recommendations to the Legislative Assembly, which fall into three main areas of what we found. First was weaknesses and gaps in the expense policy framework and practices at the Legislative Assembly. Second was that the purchasing card usage violated the policy in place. And third, we found there was no effective mechanism for reporting policy violations directly to the Legislative Assembly Management Committee, or LAMPSI as it is usually called. Our intention with this audit is to inform the Legislative Assembly on its financial processes and practices. To do that, we reviewed all of the expense claims made by the Clerk and the Sergeant at Arms from April 1, 2016 to December 31, 2018, against the documentation submitted for those claims. Our audit timeframe covered three speakers, so for that same period, we reviewed all of the expense claims made by the speakers, except for the ones related to their role as MLAs. For other expenses, we used our professional judgment to identify the higher risk accounts for a detailed review of the supporting documentation. There were 5,329 transactions during our audit period. We completed detailed testing on 1,773 transactions tested a sample of the 868 recurring expenses, such as monthly phone bills, scanned 2,112 transactions for unusual items, and did not test 576 low-risk transactions. These were things such as journal entries representing movements of amounts between accounts for accounting purposes. Overall, we looked at more than 4,700 transactions, totaling about $2.2 million. The first main thing we found in this audit was weaknesses and gaps in the expense policy framework and practices. Specifically, we found there were a number of expenses frequently made by the offices of the Speaker, Clerk, and Sergeant at Arms where there were no policies or where policies could have been enhanced to reduce the potential for abuse or misinterpretation. These expenses include staff travel, gifts, and clothing. For example, we found that travel expenses were frequently made without clear documentation to support the purpose of the travel. Some expenses were made without the appropriate approval or a clearly documented business purpose, and purchases of items such as clothing and gifts were made without a policy to guide those transactions. We found that there was no specific travel policy for staff and officers of the Legislative Assembly. We did find that some expense policies were in place, but they were not always followed. One of the policies in place governed the use of purchasing cards. Purchasing cards are common across government. They're essentially a credit card, where government pays the bills directly rather than the employee paying the bill first and then getting reimbursed. The cards are meant, in part, to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of making inexpensive purchases. They do not, and should not, replace reliance on sound financial controls. We found that, like the rest of government, the Legislative Assembly uses purchasing cards for a range of transactions and did have a policy in place for the use of the cards. However, we found a number of instances where purchasing card practices did not follow the stated policy. For example, under the purchasing card policy, using the cards for travel purchases was prohibited. Yet, we found a number of purchasing card transactions for individual travel-related expenses, such as 41 transactions totaling $24,357 for accommodation, 16 transactions totaling $2,816 for taxis, and 4 transactions totaling $964 for trains. Lastly, we found that there is no effective mechanism for reporting policy violations directly to LAMPSI. All of the issues we found could have been mitigated if the Legislative Assembly had clearly assigned responsibility for ensuring that policies are being consistently followed, 
and that any significant or systemic breaches of policy are reported to an appropriate authority. One of the responsibilities of the Executive Financial Officer is to provide strategic direction and oversight for financial and policy functions, and to apply best practices. The Executive Financial Officer needs to be able to safely report any instances of non-compliance directly to the Speaker, the Finance and Audit Committee, or to LAMPSI, and there should be a clear expectation from LAMPSI that any significant breaches of policy will be reported to them. That's our report summary for today. Thank you for joining us. This is the first performance audit in a planned series of audits on the Legislative Assembly. Upcoming audits in this series will focus on fixed assets, compensation and benefits, governance, and a further look at purchasing card administration and usage across the Legislative Assembly. This and our other reports are available on our website at www.bcauditor.com.